All right, guys, welcome back into another NBA DFS video. My name is Eric Paul Zane with 9 to 5 Sports. Going to be breaking down the top core plays here for this Monday NBA DFS slate for both FanDuel and DraftKings. Uh, the pricing is pretty similar across the board, so there's only one player on FanDuel that I'm really going out of my way to play that I wouldn't be going out of my way to play on DraftKings. So I'll start with that player. So TJ Warren on FanDuel is 3.7, and on FanDuel, it's just like a much easier play. Uh, Royce O'Neal is expected to sit in this game, so that means TJ Warren should kind of be locked into those 20 or so minutes that he got in the previous game. Obviously, was highly productive in that game, shot six for eight. You don't expect that again, but on FanDuel, if you can get 18 FanDuel points, you know, with that maybe an increase in minutes, I think that's going to be the route to go. He should be a very strong, solid fan to play. But now getting into the top five plays for DraftKings, starting out with number five, Kyrie Irving. So Kyrie Irving is a very interesting play today. Uh, obviously been on a little bit of a great stretch. 52, 60 DK points over his last two games. And if you look at his previous game against Washington, had 41 DK points. We would certainly take 41 DK points from him tonight, but I kind of think that's what we're going to get. I do like the fact that we do have the upside to get maybe 50, maybe even 60 DK points, but I do think that we are going to be locking in at least 40 DK points. So that is a play that I like, at least at the start of the day. Court play number four is going to be Denny. I don't really know how we go away from him. If you just look at his past four games, he's been able to hit value given his price point of those slates, each of those games. Okay. And he's still priced below 5k, which does seem a little bit too cheap. Uh, this is certainly a price point in which you should just be trying to load up on him. Even in the last game against Brooklyn, where he only had 26 minutes, he was able to score 21 DK points. So if he still gets the increase in minutes, like he has been getting the last few games, let's just say 30, 35 DK points or 30 or 35 minutes. He should be able to get to around 30 DK points or so. So at this current price point, still too cheap, still a price point at which we are buying on him. Core play number three is going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a very similar play to the last one. It's going to be Kyle Anderson. Kyle Anderson has been playing extremely well with Carl Anthony Towns off the court. and He's been getting a ton of minutes and that's really the biggest thing for him. It's like if the minutes are going to be there, he's going to be a productive player. We look at the last few games. You know, four out of the last five games, he's had over 30 minutes and he's been able to produce over 30 DK points on average in those games. So I think this is going to be a great spot for him going against Portland, a team in which he just put up 32 DK points against at 5.2. It's kind of just a play that you need to be going out of your way to make. And then staying with that game, I do like Rudy Gobert. Okay, Rudy Gobert at price at 7.2 does seem like a cheap price point, given the fact they just went for 47 DK points against this team. And if you look at his last three games with Carl Anthony Towns off the court, really been productive. I think we will be getting a great chance to get around 40 DK points out of him. Obviously, last game was one rebound shy of a double-double. There's a good chance that he gets that again today. So Rudy Gobert is certainly someone I'm looking to play. Just don't get into foul trouble, buddy. All right. Maybe, maybe if you're worried about the foul trouble a little bit, throw in a little bit of Naz Reed in replace of Rudy Gobert just slightly. And then my top core play on the slate is going to be Bogdanovich. Okay. It's just going to be tough not to play him just given the fact that he has been playing extremely well with Murray not there, and he's not expected to be active once again in this game. So I'm not saying we're going to be locking in 40 DK points like we did uh, the last two slates with him, but I do think we are going to continue to see him play well. He does have a huge usage rate with Murray off the court. It's above 30%, and obviously he's been extremely productive with him. His per 36 DK point total is around 40 DK points, so I guess it really wouldn't be shocking to see him go for 40 again. And he wasn't shooting the ball extremely well. I mean, Sure. Two, two nights going against Brooklyn, seven for nine from three. That's very good. And 12 from 18. That's pretty good as a whole. But last game against Chicago, you know, that, that's kind of just a normal, a little bit above normal game. So maybe we won't get that. But I do think we should begin at least, let's say, 28 DK points with the upside to go for 47 DK points. So, yes, he is someone I'm certainly looking to play this slate as well. Now, if Monte Morris can't go again, and even if he can go, I still think we're going to be looking at like Jordan Goodwin as a decent price point play. Obviously, if Monte Morris is out, that just makes him much more of a strong play. For now, I see him more of a lineup filler, but once we get confirmation that Morris is out, then he becomes a much stronger play. So just trying to close out this build, I don't really like it the way it's set up just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and make one slight adjustment, maybe put Kyle Kuzma in there, Ben a stud. We can afford to pay up from Charles Bassey. And then I kind of think someone like Marcus Smart is like the epitome of a shoulder shrug play where if you end up on him, you end up on him and you're fine with it. So this is what I'm looking at for a first look build. All right, that's all I have for you guys for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give a like and subscribe. That helps me be able to put out more content for you guys. All right, let's have a good slate. And as always, guys, let's keep cashing.